And welcome back, everybody, to the PGA DFS Pick Show. I am your host, John McNutt. You can find me on socials at John Cole 19 here for Fantasy Sports Insight, talking at PGA DFS on DraftKings. As always, all stats on this show are powered by Fantasy National Golf Club. If you haven't already, check them out. They are excellent for building models each week. You can even build lineups there, do all your research. Uh, big shout out to Fantasy National. But let's jump right in. This week, we are talking Butterfield Bermuda Championship. I hate the name of this event, uh, but I still like the event itself. Bermuda is an excellent course here. Port Royal Golf Course in Bermuda. A little bit about the course. It's only 6,800 yards. Very short uh, for a PGA course. A par 71 Bermuda grass greens. Some notes about the course, there is hazards everywhere. Lots and lots of sand. This is a seaside course. We will see balls in the water potentially, um, but really we're worried about the wind constantly when it comes to this course. It will flare up big time. And looking at the week, it looks like the first couple of days will be mildly windy, followed by even windier over the weekend. So as far as scoring goes, we may not see all that great of scoring. Uh, last year's winner was, I believe, 19 under. Uh, we won't, might see something like that, maybe even a, a touch under that. The uh, cut last year was five under par, but 19 under won it all. It was very, very windy on the weekend. Scoring became much more difficult. I would expect something similar this week. Uh, the fairways, they're like pretty wide open here. And as far as if you miss them, they are not penal at all. So not worry about drive accuracy. Drive distance might help a little bit, but really it's a short course. It's not like uh, golfers are really just going to bomb and gouge here. Um, I think with the wind and the hazards, golfers tend to uh, bring the three wood instead of the driver uh, more often than not in order to just avoid being in the trap or being uh, really in a bad spot. Uh, around the greens certainly comes into play here. Again, I think a lot of that has to do with the wind. Um, and then bogey, double bogey avoidance is absolutely something I put into my model this week, trying to make sure golfers don't hit those big numbers, uh, whether it's uh, because of uh, hazards, sand, etc. The greens themselves, as mentioned, Bermuda grass greens, they are very, very slow. Really, the Velcro is the uh, term used on Fantasy National Golf Club. Very soft as well. They've seen a lot of rain. Um, so expect different conditions than we see week in and week out, especially uh, Bermuda grass, usually very, very fast. Not the case this week. Uh, and then some elevation changes, lots of ups and downs. You can see the photo behind me, uh, quite a bit of elevation change on this hole. Expect that throughout the course this week. That's about it as far as uh, the key stats go. And the course, jumping into my favorite golfers, I'm going to start with Ben Griffin. He's 9,300 on DraftKings. I really like him a lot this week. Um, he's 25 to 1 outright. I think that's certainly in play. He was 23rd last week, runner up at the Sanderson Farms in October. Uh, he played this event last year, finished third place. And um, a lot of it has to do with his putting. He is, Bermuda Grass is his best putting service. He ranks fifth in my model over the last 100 rounds on Bermuda Grass Greens. Uh, he is very good around the greens as well. Uh, he ranks in my model ninth place around the greens, and that's over the course of the last year. Number one in my model for avoiding bogeys, 11th for, I'm sorry, number one avoiding double bogeys, 11th for avoiding bogeys. He is going to miss those big numbers very frequently, and then ranks uh, 14th Tia Green on short courses. I think it's a really good fit for him this week. Look Ben Griffin's way as uh, really probably your second guy in your lineup. Uh, next up is Akshay Matia. Uh, if you've been a part of Fantasy Sports Insight, we've played this guy a lot over the last year. It's been some hit and miss. He did get his first win on the PGA Tour. Uh, that came in uh, at the Barracuda Championship in July. He was 10th place last week, 21st at the Zozo before that. He tends to play well on these coastal uh, courses, kind of some of the outside of the U.S. courses. He's played well here, uh, played well at uh, Puerto Rico. 
He's played well in Mexico. Uh, he finished 17th at this course in 2022. He's a very good ball striker, ranks fourth in my model over the last year. He does struggle with the putter. He's outside the top 100 when it comes to putting in this field, um, but really he can crush it. He scores really well on par fives. I have him ranked second overall. Scores on par fours. I have him ranked second there also, and he's 10th in good drives gained. There's a lot to like for Akshay. If he can get the putter rolling, he absolutely is in contention to win this event. Uh, so look his way as well. I think he's a great place to start your lineups at 10K on DraftKings. Now, uh, if you want to fit one or both of those guys in your lineup, you probably need some values, some pivot plays. I'm going to start with Scott Piercy. He's 7,200 on DraftKings, 110 outright uh, to win. I don't really like that very much. I think Scott Piercy is not uh, primed to win this week, but I certainly think he makes a lot of sense in your DraftKings lineup. He was 23rd last week. He was 42nd at the Shriners, uh, Shriner in October. Uh, so he's got some good form. He was 14th at this course in 2020. He did miss the cut here last year. My model has him ranked fourth birdie or better on easy courses. He's also top 10 in windy conditions um, and then 12th avoiding double bogeys. Uh, so I really think he's got a good chance this week. Good fit here. Uh, also ranks 22nd on short courses, which I kind of think is important comparing here to other places. We do not have the advantage of shot link at this course. Uh, so we lose some of the stats we typically see at other courses, um, but using things like easier courses or even uh, the sh uh, short courses, things of that nature, coastal courses, looking into those gives you a good idea of some comp courses and a better course fit. So I like all that for Scott Piercy this week. One more golfer, not uh, shown on the slide. That's Kevin Roy. He is only 6,700 on DraftKings. He's 200 to one outright. I think he's got an excellent chance to top 20, top 30 this week. Very good ball striker. He also likes short courses. Uh, he pops in my model a lot. So look for Kevin Roy as another option there. Cheapo at 6,700. Uh, some pivots. I usually don't mention 10K guys uh, as far as pivot options uh, in this slide, but I'm going to start with Adam Scott here. There are four golfers that are 10,000 and above on DraftKings. There's two of them. He's the third uh, highest projected ownership. So I think he's that's pretty significant, I think, for the highest priced golfer on DraftKings. Um, I'm getting him right now projected at about 15%. But again, there's at least two golfers in that 10K range projected as higher ownership than him. I've got him ranked third overall in my model. And I think he is just clearly the class of this field. Adam Scott, we know he can roll his rock on the putting surface. He is definitely has the best pedigree of anybody in this field. I like Adam Scott this week, especially if he is going to be lower owned than half those other guys up there in the 10K range. Uh, one more golfer to mention, that is Ryan Palmer. He's at 8,500. It's kind of stinky looking at him at 8,500. This guy is typically in the high 7Ks, low 7Ks for most events on DraftKings uh, pricing. Uh, but I've got him at about 6% ownership. And again, it's probably due to him being or feeling very overpriced. Um, he was fifth place last week. He's a great ball striker, and he is best on these short courses. Um, I'm looking around him in the projected ownerships, and both of the Woos, Brandon Wu, Dylan Wu, as well as uh, above him, uh, Hubbard and Smalley, both are like two to three times the ownership that you're going to get for Ryan Palmer. I think he is absolutely to be looked at as a pivot option here if you're trying to differentiate, uh, get some, if you've got too many jockey players, especially kind of as um, at the top end of the pricing on DraftKings, I think a lot of people are going to gravitate to just a handful of golfers there. So maybe get a little bit different using Ryan Palmer or even starting with Adam Scott, just to be a bit different than the majority of the field there. So that is going to do it for this week's event. Um, I'm really excited to announce that we are doing a special through the swing season starting this week. If you use the sign up code swing season on our website, you'll get a free week of golf. You can use that up to three times. So use it for the rest of this swing season. There are at least the three events here between now and the end of the year. I believe there'll be a fourth one in uh, December. Uh, we'll see what DraftKings does for all of these, but I expect at least three events. You can use the code three times. That'll get you a free week of PGA in our Discord. What you'll find behind that paywall is ownership projections. You'll get uh, kind of a weather update on Wednesday evening 
as well as my core plays for FanDuel, Yahoo, DraftKings, DraftKings tiers, uh, all of that uh, kind of behind the paywall there. And then a player pool too. If you're doing mass entry uh, to be able to kind of build where you want to have uh, your player pool at. So uh, join me. Certainly use again that code of swing season. It can be used on our website. That's FSIDFS.com. That'll get you into the discord uh, where all of that information is at. You can also get a link through our Twitter page at FSI underscore DFS. It's really looking forward to having some extra people the next, next few weeks as we kind of turn the to the calendar year and get into January, starting with Tournament of Champions. That's when the season really picks up. So come join us. Give us a try here for the next couple of weeks and uh, see what you like and uh, hopefully keep you around going into next season. All right. Thanks for watching and good luck this week.